Hey robot makers, do you want to know how to use the NRF 24L01 wireless module with a Raspberry Pi Pico? Then keep watching. So over on the bench here I've got two Raspberry Pi Picos and two NRF 24L01. A bit of a mouthful. So this breadboard here is from the 52Pi Raspberry Pi Pico starter kit. You might have seen me doing an unboxing video of before. And I've also got a Pi Moroni RGB keypad as well with a Raspberry Pi Pico on board. They're both wired up to the RF modules and I've got some code that I can show you as well how these two can talk to each other. So the first thing is that I have a library module for Raspberry Pi Pico. You can download this from github.com slash micropython slash micropython and within there there's a drivers folder that has this nrf24l01.py library. Um, it's very easy to use, we don't need to go into too much detail about that library itself. But we simply just need to bring that code in. From the nrf 24L01 library, we import the NRF 24L01 class. We also import machine and SPI and pin. Is it SPI or is it SPI? We also import time and sleep and we also import something called struct. We then set up the pins for the SPI device. So we have a chip select not, which is on pin 14. That's a pin out and it's a value of one. We have the chip enable which is on pin 17 the mode again is pin out and the value for that is zero and we also have the built-in led on pin 25 i'm also setting something called the payload size we don't need to worry too much about that that's essentially how many bytes that we're going to stuff into the messages backwards and forwards if it's too large then it can fail more often so sometimes these are a lot smaller i've just gone for 20. i've then created a variable that's called roll and it's either send or receive and this means i can use the exact same code block on both devices and i only have to change the the roll to either send or receive depending on which Raspberry Pi Pico I'm using this on. So I'm going to have a sender and I'm going to have a receiver. So if the role is sender then we set something called the pipe. So the pipe is an address um, in hexadecimal and this is essentially like a channel that the, the radio will listen to. We have a sending channel and we have a receiving channel. It's a bit like a walkie talkie but you've got two separate channels, one for sending and one receiving. You can see that they're both switched over depending on the role. Next we have a setup function so we're going to initialize the RF module. We do that by creating a variable of that class. We pass it as an SPI zero it's on the SPI zero bus we set the chip select not the chip enable and the payload size and then we set the pipes up for transmit and receive so the transmit has got the send pipe and the receiver has got the receive pipe and then we set it to start listening and then we simply return that NRF object from the setup function next I've created a really simple uh, function that just flashes the end the onboard LED a number of times that we define in this times variable it's just a quick way of flashing the LED next is the send function so this receives the NRF object and it also receives a message that we want to send and we just print out sending the message and then the message just to the console and then we tell it to stop listening but while we send messages we have to stop listening and again it's a bit like a push to talk on a walkie talkie radio if you've ever used one of those so we now have a for loop so we're going to loop through each character in that message because we can only send one character at a time so we need to break that message up into a single character one at a time so we do this by saying for any range the length of the message so how many how many letters are there in the message and then we just put this in a try accept block and this is just in case there was an issue actually sending that message out so the first thing that we do is we encode the string we pick the character of n in the, the message so if we start out with a message that's just hello so it's five characters the first character when we go on the, the for loop will be h and then the second character will be e and then the third l l and zero so encoding changes it from being a character type to being a byte type we can then load that into a variable called byte array using the byte array function and again this just enables us to put bytes into a variable and then we're going to create a buffer and we're going to pack that buffer and packing is a way of putting an array of bytes into a variable in a, in a specific way so this helps us when we actually want to send these characters so what we're doing is we're converting things from nice strings into characters and then converting those characters into bytes and then sending those bytes one at a time using our nrf send function you can see there we're sending the buffer using the nrf send we then print out the the role message and the message character as being sent this was just a debug really we don't actually need to include this comment out if we wanted and then we flash the led one time so if you look on that led flash it flashes on and then off for a tenth of a second it's really quick but it's quick enough that you can actually see it but not slow enough that it slows down the code from running if there was an error it prints out sorry message wasn't sent
sent and then after we've sent the entire message we then send the new line character so slash n is like a return character and we'll use that to detect the end of that message and then once we've done that we can start listening again so the main loop of code we then flash the led once we create a new variable called nrf passing it from the setup function remember that creates the nrf object for us we then do nrf start listening and then we set the message string to be nothing so we start out with a nice clean message string so the while true loop will continue running as long as that device is switched on so we then have another message variable that we just call msg and that's going to store the individual characters whereas message string is going to contain the entire message made up of those individual messages as they come through so if the role is send and we're just going to send using the nrf object we're going to pass it yellow world and then we're going to send test now if we've not set the role to send if we've set the rule to receive we can then check for some messages if nrf has any bytes waiting for us and this is very similar to if you've used the serial function before this is exactly how that works so if there's anything in the buffer we can then do something with it i've then created a variable called package package then receives whatever byte is waiting for us in the nrf object we then unpack that into our message variable and this s here just means it's of type string so it knows what to unpack it as and then we can say that the message that equals the very first character in that message block because it actually has some other things in there that we don't need to know about and then we flash the led once to say that we received that we can then check to see if that message that we receive is a, a slash n which is one character the character 13 in ascii as i remember it will check to see if it's got that new line character and the length of the string is less than 20. this was just to stop it if there was a problem and it missed that character it could continue on forever and just eat up all the memory on the raspberry pi peacock and crash the device so having this less than 20 is just a way of checking that but it means my messages are limited to 20 in length we can then print out full message the message string and then the actual character and then we can then set the message string to be nothing because we've printed out the message we've completed our task otherwise we check if the length of the message string is less than 20 again if it's larger than 20 then we want to set it back to nothing otherwise we add the message string to whatever the message string was plus the message character and once that's uh, received and we've got the end of line character we then print out that full message to the console so let me just switch that on and give that a go we'll see there that the leds are flickering very fast so now over in the console i can see that it's printing out those messages yellow world and test in quite rapid succession it's doing it as fast as it can print it to the screen and you can see there the leds are almost constantly flickering on and off between them and they're communicating purely by radio frequency so to load this onto our raspberry pi picos this is what we need to do we just open up this uh, file window here so we need to upload the library module for first of all so if we click on that and I'm using VS code here and I've got the Pico Go module installed from the extensions if you go over to the uh, marketplace extensions and search for Pico Go there it is Pico Go uh, and that just allows you to use these buttons at the bottom of the screen here to upload things to the Raspberry Pi Pico and restart it and so on let's go back to the Explorer I'm going to click on that NRF 24 L01 module uh, and if you want to get a copy of that you can actually download the code from my GitHub repository for this project and the link will be below in the description so if we click on the upload button at the bottom of the screen there we can upload this to the raspberry pi pico and that means that it's then sat on its local file system and it can find it when we uh, import it from our main code i've named this program main.py so micropython will look for two files when it boots up one that's called boot.py so if we call our file main.py it will automatically run as soon as power is provided to the board we now go to the top of here and we decide what role this is going to be so we might decide this is first of all going to be the send role so i've just commented it out there with a hash that's all we need to do to define that role i can now upload that now that's uploaded once the device receives power it'll start running that code so let's just uh, put the power back in so because i've not got the other module running at the moment it will try to run the code and then it will just fail and say that it couldn't send the code so we need both devices one in send and one in receive for this to work so what i'm going to do now is switch my cables over one has just got power the green one is just power whereas the red one is connected to this computer so this is now the sender this is the receiver so let's go back over to here and what we need to do now is change that rollover by just commenting out the send and uncommenting out the receive and making sure that we've uploaded that library first and then we can then load up the main.py as well so let's upload that too let's wait for it to reset the board and then we're good to go so powered up both boards i will power up the receive board first and then i will put the power into the send board and then you'll see immediately it will be able to see that there's a receiver and it will send the messages right away so we can see it saying hello world or yellow world and then test intermediate and it's printing out the entire message so it's sending each character one at a time from each message string and then it's doing the end of line character slash n 
which defines the end of that particular string. So this board comes in a couple of flavors. The pinouts are identical for all of these. There's a block of eight pins. So the pins are one to eight are ground is one voltage, which is 3.3 volts. Please don't use five volts or you will blow this thing up. Uh, then we have the chip enable and the chip select. Then we have the system clock and the mozzie. Mozzie is the out. Then we have the meso, which is the input. And then we have the IRQ. Now we're not actually going to use the IRQ, but that's a way that the device can actually sort of tug the cord on the Raspberry Pi Pico and say there's a message for you, but we don't need to do that. We can pull instead. And just a couple of other notes as well. You'll see these often referred as PA slash LNA, and that stands for power amplifier and low noise amplifier. And it just means that they've got this little antenna and they've got some extra circuitry in there to really suppress the noise down because this is a high frequency and that means it can throw this a lot further distance. So the ones without the antenna can do between 100 and 200 meters. The ones with the antenna can do kilometer to possibly two kilometers. So wiring up this to the Raspberry Pi Pico is pretty straightforward. Um, I did have a few issues with this when I tried this myself and I simply got the transmit and receive pins back to front. Schoolboy error. On the right hand side there we've got the voltage on uh, pin 36 and then we have the ground on pin 33 and then at the very bottom on uh, GP17 which is pin 22 that's the chip enable. So opposite on the other side on pin 19 which is GP14 we have the chip select and then we have the TX pin connected to pin GP4 which is pin 6. We have the system clock connected to pin 9 which is GP6 and then on GP7 which is pin 10 we have the RX pin. So whether you've got this little adapter board or not um, the pinouts will be slightly different. So this one is with the adapter and you can see there there's six pins and then there's another pins for voltage and ground. There's a chip enable, the chip select, the system clock, the MISO which is the in, the MOSI which is the out, the IRQ which we're not going to use and the voltage and ground. If you have the ones without the adapter that's just as simple. You can see there we've got the ground, we have voltage 3.3 volts, we have the chip enable, we have the chip select, we have the system clock, we have the MOSI, we have the MISO and the IRQ as well. This is a really fun project to do. You can separate your devices by a kilometer, that's crazy, and still send and receive small amounts of data between them. So the next thing to do would be to add this to one of our Smiles robots so that we can remotely control this up to a kilometer away. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful and I'll see you next time.